Hello class, uh, I would like to talk to you about your final project, your uh, final research paper, uh, which is the most important assignment of the semester. So far, uh, you've uh, completed uh, the uh, quizzes that I posted and the discussion board uh, that we shared our ideas and opinions and discussed on different topics so far. And then uh, also uh, the short questions and answers uh, that you did, uh, which uh, was excellent. Now, um, this semester's uh, most important assignment will be your final research paper. And this research paper uh, will be on a topic of your interest, a topic that you're interested in. Uh, so uh, we started uh, this um, project, uh, you know, from the finding the topic, choosing the right topic, and then uh, from there, developing your research questions, and then uh, after that, uh, you uh, were supposed to write your proposal, your proposal uh, under the guidelines of the uh, final research paper. So the proposal guidelines and the final research paper guidelines are uh, very much the same. Your proposal is a miniature uh, project of the final research paper. So you develop the proposal into your uh, research paper. So the proposal will have almost all uh, anatomical aspects of the research paper. Now because uh, we uh, are here at this stage where you begin to write uh, your research paper, I'd like to give you some guidelines as to uh, what are the basics of uh, a research paper what transpires in a research paper, where we begin, what, what processes we follow, and then how we conduct it, and then how we uh, uh, submit the research paper. So, uh, uh, your, and your research paper, you, you can write it in, in either by following uh, uh, the uh, MLA guideline or the APA guideline. You need to articulate, let me know which you are following. Accordingly, I will, uh, grade a paper i will look at it from that perspective and now coming to talking about a research paper research papers are different than other types of papers basically because research papers means you're trying to find something new something that has that has an issue uh, worth being uh, debated worth being discussed so uh, find a topic of your interest from uh, the areas uh, that we have read so far uh, in the uh, starting from the fifth century uh, until the 21st century, here we are. So uh, on a research paper, I also uh, provided you with the list of possible topics. You can pick one of them, or you can find your own topic. The, but finding the research topic is the most important thing. Now let's see what right, um, this process would be. Choose a topic, develop research questions on the topic, find sources, annotate the sources. So you have an annotated bibliography uh, that uh, is also a part of the of your writing. And then gather the data uh, and the quotes uh, from the sources. Uh, annotated bibliography will help you tremendously in organizing and then um, and retrieving the information that you will need in order to uh, compose your research paper. And then after that, you know, when you have your research, uh, your sources and your uh, data and all ready for you, uh, you will evaluate uh, the topic one more time because depending on the availability of the sources, depending on uh, the data that, that will give you certain direction as to where to go and how to do, uh, you will evaluate a topic one more time and see whether your topic is appropriate or not. The appropriateness of the topic depends on the availability of the sources or what sources tell you. Because until we read the sources, we do not know for sure, you know, uh, where we are heading or uh, what uh, the answers to the research questions are. And then you evaluate the topic one more time to make sure that this topic is appropriate topic. This topic will is fruitful. It will give you some some end, you know, uh, conclusion and so forth. And then narrow the topic again, you know, you uh, based on uh, the sources, based on the facts you have found, based on the discussion part, based on the analysis. Uh, so you keep sharpening, keep narrowing, keep making it more specific, 
depending on that. Now, if the sources are not available on your topic, then you may have to broaden your topic. You may have to find a topic that, that, that covers a larger area. So adjusting with the availability of the sources is a very, very the key, key point, key part. And now, you know, you should be ready to start writing a draft. So writing a draft is basically uh, explaining uh, the notes, uh, organi reorganizing your notes, and then writing them down in literature, in paragraphs. So you develop paragraphs uh, based on the topics. Uh, you would have to sort out what topics you're covering in paragraph one, paragraph two, and so forth as you progress into your research paper, as you go uh, forward in writing a research paper. And then you revise it. You come to a point where you have you you have written your draft, starting from the introduction part, and then after that, you know your research question, and then you will just start working on it uh, on the findings you have gotten so far, and then you work on it, and then you. Uh... So now um, we have a uh, we have a context here. We have a topic here. Now we have to choose choosing a topic. That's the first thing that we want to do. Now, make sure your topic is interesting. If your topic is not interesting, you'll not be able to do well. Your topic should take you, uh, you should come from your own interest. So read uh, the different modes uh, in the history of English language, uh, where, uh, what uh, in, uh, incites you, what arouses your curiosity, that uh, would be a topic uh, for you. Because you have to uh, read a lot of materials and you have to write a lot. So uh, your topic should uh, keep you engaged all through your research uh, process. Also make sure that your topic is relevant. Relevant means you know, finding materials which are relevant to your topic and the topic that's relevant to uh, what we have uh, discussed and read. Your topic should be relevant to, to the history of English language, to uh, the issues in the history of English language, something that contributes to understanding the history of English language. It could be in the Old English uh, period or the Middle English period or Modern English or whichever, or contemporary. Now, uh, uh, another uh, uh, thing to think about uh, while picking a topic is uh, you pick a topic, something that you know a lot about, not a topic that you know nothing about. We can't actually conduct any research on something we do not know enough about or we do not know a lot about. For example, I don't know anything about cancer. Can I do a research on cancer? Of course not, because if I start, then I would have to, I would have to have a lot of knowledge before I get to the point where the research begins. So uh, find a topic that you know a lot about and uh, and then from that and then uh, we would look at the next uh, point here you have a curiosity to learn more about so have uh, having learned a lot about the topic you still have curiosity you want to learn more about it something that's above the uh, common sense knowledge or above um, um, far above uh, what we know a lot about already so you can add a new knowledge or a new layer of knowledge in that uh, discipline. Uh, so that is how you can uh, come up with a research question, something that invites research. Now, your research topic should be researchable. What does researchable mean? Researchable means something that is worth researching, that uh, deserves to be researched, uh, that uh, has the potential of being explored uh, that uh, invites research. So something that is useful in that uh, area, something that is uh, that has something in, hidden inside which is still to be uncovered, uh, something that uh, um, uh, a lot a lot of people do not know enough about uh, is what is researchable. Uh, there is something out there to explore. There is something that you think is is uh, is worth being explored. Now, uh, next thing to think about while choosing a topic is availability of sources. 
this this is very important uh, you should have plenty of sources available for you to conduct research so uh, that's one of the ways for you to uh, find a topic that is why is uh, reading the sources first of all go to the library go online go to the materials database and everywhere and then uh, key in uh, the the uh, keywords and then find if there are enough uh, see if there are enough uh, materials in that area or not if nobody has researched in their area if there is nothing available in their area then research is not possible you uh, it'll be very hard for you for you to find anything about it you, you should have uh, enough materials uh, available in that area now if there are too many uh, uh, sources then you get overwhelmed then you would have to narrow it down by narrow down the topic you have to narrow down the topic because everybody knows about it. Too many people know about it. So many people have written about it. So uh, on that uh, topic, you cannot do much. Uh, uh, textual materials, that is where you can start your research from. And then uh, go and find journals, uh, recent journals, uh, not older than 10 years. And read what people have said about it. How many uh, sources are available. Uh, and if there are just a good number of sources and there's just still a lot uh, to be done, then that would be worth uh, doing a research on. So that's how we can just come up with the topic. Now, after your topic, uh, you finalize the topic, make sure the topic is approved by your instructor. Uh, um, we have to, it's, it's a very good idea to let the instructor know as early as possible what a topic is, whether that topic is worth doing or not. It has to be approved. The topic must be approved by the instructor. You do not want to give the instructor a, a surprise at the end of the semester, sudden surprise at the end of the semester. So uh, follow the process and let the instructor know and get the approval of the instructor on your topic. That's the way, best way to go. Then now the next step uh, is uh, research questions, right? Developing your research questions. Research begins with research questions. Remember, you know, other kinds of writings, you know, especially of journalistic type, you know, they or essays, you know, argument essays, they begin with the thesis. You already have an idea. You already have something to uh, prove and then you begin with that but a research paper does not go like that a research paper begins uh, with a research question a research question that you do not know the answer yet so that's why you have to conduct a research so at the beginning you know what do you want to find out it could be one question it could be a list of questions depending on how narrow or broad your topic is so if you have one question, you can divide it into sub questions, smaller questions, and your whole research paper becomes the, the answer to the research question or the research questions. Uh, so um, make sure your research is well focused, right? And you can ask yourself at the beginning, you know, when you develop a research question, what is the goal of research? What do you want to find out? What do you want to explore through your research? What, who is your intended audience? What does the in audience already know? Because you don't want to let the audience, uh, give the audience information that they already know. You are giving the information uh, to the audience that they do not know. So it begins from what they do not know and then gives them that knowledge, right? So these are some of the questions that you have to think in your mind about your topic and developing your research questions. And then coming to the real research questions, after that uh, is, is uh, the, the, the thing to do uh, for you, right? Research begins with the research question, which I already said, right? Read a literature on a topic. Read literature means read the published materials on a topic. Read whatever is available and that are authentic. Make sure resources are authentic. Make sure sources are not just, you know, opinions of people. They are uh, uh, peer-reviewed articles, right, or published textbooks and materials, right, that contain information for you that will help you lead to next thread and the thread after that. Uh, 
read scholarship on the topic read what scholars have said about it and what they have found out about your topic find something that that is worth uh, research that's worthy of being researched something that that uh, has the potential of of uh, of uh, some new knowledge right prepare a uh, list of questions that uh, a list of questions will help you you know which uh, among them to pick uh, because it's a draft phase still you know you're taking down notes until now you've not even begun writing a draft so what you're doing is you're just uh, brainstorming and you're working and you're just planning and you're just you know preparing right it's a preparation stage of a research paper so you can have a bunch of questions you know and you can pick one of them two of them and whichever apply to uh, your interest right now narrow down the questions depending on the research plan depending on the research plan depending on the availability of sources depending on your interest area you, you will have to narrow it down narrowing down the topic begins from the beginning and then keeps going on until the end until you have submitted research paper until the point you submit a research paper you keep you know making your research paper your topic more and more appropriate more and more you know uh, adapting it more and more to the contents right because the research question is the plan of a research paper the main plan the master plan of a research paper now what would be the next step after that now you have the research question now you can your research questions come from sources yes you read sources now you go back to reading sources again finding the sources read the sources again the different types of sources and find out the answers to the questions right to your research questions right you could you, you your sources can be books published books right uh, of authentic authors journals when i say journals here i mean scholarly journals read scholarly journals find out the answers to the questions in the articles published in the journals the scholarly journals in the area in in area now when we say history of english language history of english language can go into different uh, related areas right it could go to sociology partly social linguistics could go to history could go to literature could go to the history of languages right or history of language or languages for that matter if you're writing about uh, for example, uh, Indo-European languages, then, yeah, and if you're writing, comparing, you know, English language with other languages, then, yes, uh, the history of languages and uh, the history in general, the backbone is history, right? So those, those would be the areas for you to navigate. And then, you know, uh, the source, uh, the scholarly journals in those areas, right? Uh, you could also use magazines, uh, for example. Why would we use magazines? Of course, you know, if you're writing your uh, magazines, newspapers can also be utilized as primary sources. For example, if you're analyzing a particular genre, a particular, uh, you know, uh, variety of English, then you might get some samples of that variety of English from magazines, published magazines or newspapers and so forth right so they can also be used right uh, as primary sources not as secondary sources as primary sources and government websites you know you may need some data or you may need statistics right or various internet sources you need to be very very selective you need to be highly selective in uh, using the sources whether you're using those sources for primary or secondary sources you have to be very clear about that right uh the next step after that would be uh documenting research now you start documenting research documenting research is writing from sources right uh how you document it and the documentation part would be uh writing from the sources right so you can make small taking down notes from the from from the materials right whenever you find whenever you read something it could be online it could be offline or whatever 
take down the notes. Make a note of that because you're going to forget it later on. Right? You want to take down the quote unquote whatever you found that is that you think will be useful to you and also uh, the author's last name and the uh, journal of the article and then all information right together create a profile of that right create a database right so that you can retrieve them whenever you need them right framing arguments you know just frame your arguments as to how you're going to examine it how you're going to uh, analyze it right and uh, the sources and the analysis is basically the part that you will need you know very very important right and writing drafts and start writing a drafts right writing your drafts filling the content right and then refining you know keep revising it and refining refining a draft right formatting a draft format it you know according to the mla or apa whichever and then refine for language and then finishing your paper now let me come back to it i'll come back to it again you know uh, Annotations. Annotations are very important. Uh, I have talked about annotated bibliography, which is a part of your assignment, right? This part of assignment, you will read certain number of sources that you have read, and I'm going to assign you, for example, five sources, right? Five sources from, you know, 10 sources you have read or 20 sources you have read, pick the best five that you think would be the most relevant to you for your research, right? And then complete the citation of the complete citation of the sources so jot down the complete citation of the sources which is the author's uh, full name last name first name whichever way you put right and then the title of the article right or the title of the book title of the article if it's a article in a uh, journal or in an anthology and then the anthology or the journal right whichever it is and the volume and the number and then the page number range of page numbers and then the year publication right whatever and the source where you found it my exact source it could be online if it is online do not forget the link there because you know you will have a hard time finding that article again right so put the whole information there and then and and you would have a chunk a, a, a small paragraph uh, that will contain the summary uh, which means the main idea of of the source and then the uh, how you evaluate it, the assessment of the source right and then the reflection as to how you reflect and you know, your recommendation right recommendation of the source to whoever uh, whatever you evaluate it like right so uh, you can go to our party and you'll see plenty of examples that's where I got it from this sample comes from Ali Purdue, right? See, look at this, the way it is, right? Davidson, Hilda Ellis, Hilda Ellis, first name and middle name, and then Davidson, the last name, right? And the title of the book is Roles of the uh, Northern Goddess, right? London, place of publication. You don't need in the uh, uh, ninth uh, edition of MLA, but it used to be old fashion right and uh, the publisher and then the year of publication right and then now this is the summary right this is how you put the annotations right annotated bibliography read the sample annotated bibliography i have posted for you that will tell you exactly how to annotate right this annotation is is for you because you're going to use this annotation this annotated bibliography to write your paper as a reference for you to go back and see right gathering data from sources gather data from sources list useful data thoughts opinions theories field studies quotations and so forth right whatever information you have from the sources and whatever answers your research questions because you should always keep in mind what you're doing when you're writing a research paper is you're trying to answer the research questions through the sources right what pattern do you see in the information collected this is basically your analysis in the pattern right just you know uh, dumping the information that you find from the secondary sources or whatever you have read is not research your analysis 
your uh, your perspective your and your that would be your findings right the discussion part is very very important right how you uh, utilize the sources in order to find the answer to the questions to the research questions that is the most important part for you right now evaluate your topic again right evaluating the topic again right is your topic well focused it should not be general it should be very specific does your topic raise an issue right that's worthy of examination right does your topic invite a research into outside sources such as the library work and field studies right one more time revisit your topic i would say that revisit the topic as many times as possible right and then um, you have to structure it and word it in, in in such a way that it represents the spirit of your results right your the title of, of a paper is the uh, it, it carries the spirit of your research question a research question is basically the question that is answered right uh, in your research paper your finding and if there should be some kind of consistency make sure that they are consistent right so that's why i brought it back again here to talk about it right you now we start writing your drafts your drafts now you're ready now you have, you have a clear outline as to what you are doing right now you have all information that you need right and start drafting writing your draft Right. They can create an outline if you like. And most people do that. They create an outline based on what they have found out. And here's what I'm going to have on a first page, first paragraph, second paragraph, third paragraph, and so forth. Right. Structured uh, in, in a way that leads the reader from uh, the research question into the uh, different levels of findings and then finally coming to the real finding and conclusion and then your your recommendations right so start uh, starting uh, you know start explaining the notes right and do not worry about grammar or organization at this stage i'd say that do not worry about grammar at all and organization at all right write the content as planned in the notes right this is uh the part for you and then you know when you have revised when you have uh, uh, uh when your uh, draft is all ready then you would go and revisit again you have to uh revisit it as many times as possible revising and formatting read several times after the drafting part is complete right Take time to read a different sessions. Check for organization of ideas. So reading a different sessions means you can read it in the morning. When you get tired, just put it off and then just go and then after a couple hours or in the evening, read again. So if you haven't started a research paper in time, you have plenty of days, you know, before it's ready. I give you at least, you know, three or four weeks. So you have you have plenty of time you know to start early so you read it at different periods right at different stages which will make your mind fresh right you will not be stressed and you can come up with the best idea right check for organization of ideas idea how ideas are organized make sure the ideas do not repeat right make sure paragraph is coherent right and if there is any paragraph that is not coherent you can shuffle it reshuffle it right move from you know b to you know two to three three to four four to one numbers you know right shuffle it uh check uh in-text citations for accuracy make sure in-text citations are correctly done and they're appropriately cited and there is a context around each in-text citation and each in-text citation matches with the list of works cited right they need to match right if it is MLA, we call it works cited. If it is APA, we call it references. So each uh, index citation should match with the list of references or the list of works cited at the bottom. And any that does not 
match that needs to be eliminated right now check for consistency and coherence very very important right the idea flows well and is consistent from beginning to end right that is very very important for you now editing part editing part and revision part they are different revision is basically your uh, revising and shuffling for ideas and organization and so forth editing is in the lower level uh, i'd say it, you know lower level editing right uh, read the prompt one more time one more time oh i would say you know many times you know you read the prompt because we do not want to go deviate from it go too far from it from it right you want to stay on track with the trump prompt uh, and make sure that the paper flows everything right it, it uh, follows everything right it flow it has a flow and then it follows everything right check for grammar and punctuation i mean we can use grammarly.com right to check for grammar and punctuation right make sure they are correct right make sure do not ignore that part right we are english students make sure your intake citations and list of books cited match perfectly so i already talked about it before right make sure you follow the research and documentation guidelines perfectly right perfect research documentation guidelines right if it is mla mla 8th edition or 9th edition fine and mla uh, you can i posted uh, a, um, a powerpoint for you uh, and then plenty of materials on MLA documentation. Go to documentation folder, and you have plenty of documentations there on MLA. Right? Plenty of you know material for you to make sure that MLA is correct. And plus, you know, I'm also available. Right? You can talk to me one on one, and I can help you with the MLA, whether you follow MLA or not, or you go to the writing center. They are there to help you. Submit your paper before the deadline. Before the deadline, submit a paper. Right? do not cross the deadline right, which will keep it make it very awkward okay folks uh, i hope this uh, helps you and this explains you about your final research paper i uh, look forward to reading your papers and your timely submissions i wish you all the best i'm available during my office hours i'm i'm very much you know available um, through the email just let me know send me messages and i'll be right with you i'll get back to you and we can work and then we can help i can help you okay best of luck and thanks a lot